<sighs> Came in the yard today and it feels like Siberia out here. Fucking freezing. We are honestly so full. You can't even move around the yard today. We've got cars everywhere. And this is not good. Let me explain why. Just before we crack on with the rest of the video, 2022, we've finally made it. It's gonna be a big year on the channel. More growth, more fun, and more good times. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and leave any comments below this video. Questions, suggestions, you name it, opinions, I don't care. Comment below, every comment and every like helps the growth of the channel so much, and especially a subscribe. So go and do that right now, and let's get back to the video. Usually a busy yard is a happy yard, but it's not right now. And uh, let me tell you why. So obviously we agreed to do the Hot Wheels show where we are delivering 75 of our cars to the O2 Arena for Hot Wheels monster trucks to drive over and jump over with motorbikes. All sounds good up to now, but the yard is an absolute sea of cars and we've got some of the Hot Wheels cars right at the back here. And we're supposed to be delivering them tomorrow. So panic stations are setting in slightly because we need to get all of these cars out get one of the lorries loaded and get the other lorry loaded ready for delivery in the morning. We've got two days to deliver 75 cars, hopefully got four lorries on the job, but at the moment I've only got two confirmed, which is still a bit of a worry. There's so much that could potentially go wrong with this and uh, I'm just fingers crossed praying it doesn't go wrong, but if it does, it does. You cross that bridge when we come to it. I'm planning on doing all 75 cars in one day, which is tomorrow. Whether that happens or not, I'm not really sure yet, but that's the plan, so that's what we're gonna go with. It's not all doom and gloom, because I am gonna be going to the Hot Wheels show on Friday and enjoying the show, so if any of you guys are going, let me know, send me your videos, and if you see me there, come say hello, I'm a friendly face. This will be good in the long run, because this means that all of these cars that we're sending to Hot Wheels will be back and ready to be scrapped eventually, maybe next week or the week after, because we've all got, we've got to get them all out next week. So it's a hectic week at Ace Car Breakers this week, but we love it. Happy Yard is a busy yard, but it's just a little bit stressful today. All right, I'm going to take you guys round to the other yard today to go and see the BMW i8, see how we're getting on with that. I need to have a little look into that because there's a few bits which are niggling away at me. And also the VW Golf is round there. There's a few modifications I'd like to show you guys. I have just recorded 20 minutes of footage and forgot to turn the microphone on. Let's start again. You see those two yellow lights on my dashboard, right? One on the left is the tire pressure monitoring light, which never goes out because as soon as I reset it, it just comes back on because I put Mattify profile wheels on there which don't really fit properly. The one on the right, that light there, some of you may not know what that light is, but I'll inform you right now. That light is an ad blue light, and ad blue is put into a lot of motors these days, and it's there basically to reduce, um, reduce? <laughs> reduce emissions. That light comes on when there's roughly about a thousand miles of ad blue left in the tank and tells me that I need to fill it back up again. So I've got a little funny story about that light and about AdBlue that you guys are probably going to really enjoy. So a few months ago, which was the last time that AdBlue light came on, I was on my way home from Birmingham and it flashed on and said I've got 900 miles left. I had 100 miles till I was home or I could still stop at the yard on the way home and fill up. So I thought, no, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to do it in the morning. I've got plenty of miles in the tank. So I got home, parked up. Everything is sweet. Thinking I'm going to get the AdBlue in the morning. No problem. So anyway, half past five, I've got out to the car, started the car up, hmm, no start, hmm, no start. Pink comes on the screen, you have run out of ad blue, no engine start. Really? It said 900 miles yesterday. Now it's got none. So number one, Ford, you are liars. You're liars, guys. You're lying to me. So people, if you've got a Ford Ranger, watch out because they're liars. So anyway, I thought, what am I gonna do? So I Googled, can you put water in your ad blue tank because I'm staying around my girlfriends, everybody's asleep, it's half past five in the morning and I've not got a key to get back in. I'm gonna have to piss somebody off to get back in and I don't want to do that yet. So I'm thinking, right, can I put water in there? I've Googled it, it says you shouldn't put water in there but a little bit is okay. So I poured a little bit of water in there just so hopefully it could get above the sensor line again and start up. Vroom. 
car didn't start up so i thought oh maybe it's the water maybe it doesn't like the water maybe I've, I've ruined it anyway i've googled what actually is ant blue because i don't know what it is and basically if you don't know it is urine from pigs basically piss from pigs so i was like hmm i had the empty bottle of water and i did need a piss at the time so i filled up this plastic bottle of water disgusting i can't believe i'm telling you guys this story but it is funny to be fair i've poured the contents of the bottle so my bottle of piss into the tank and i thought you know what i think i might have done it here i think i might have started it and i was proper proud of myself so i've jumped in the car and gone turn the key over turn the key over turn the key over and it still didn't start Bush. i'm now sat there with a bottle which is stinks of piss and no way of starting my truck so end of the story had to call up the missus pissed her off ruined their day ruined my day and to make it worse i basically just pissed in my car so if you're ever stuck without ad blue please do not use your own piss because it won't work to be fair it hasn't damaged it i've not had any lights to come up to say it's ruined the car or anything but just wouldn't do it if I was you. It's just, uh, yeah, it was a low point in my life, I won't lie, but it's what it is. Anyway, let's get out of the truck for a second. 2022, I've got so much on my plate at the moment. It's, it, my head is like scrambled. Obviously I've bought the property. So with that as well, it's just adding stress. And I don't know if any of you guys have bought properties. If you have, you will know how stressful it really is. And coronavirus is making it worse. So that is just, mind-numbingly painful at the moment but i'll be releasing a video on that very very soon you right mate but we've got the bmw i8 on the go at the moment which is the main priority to get done this is actually the donor car it kind of looks like the original car because it's purple now but we are halfway through the rebuild and i'll bring you up to speed if you don't already know we've done a full dash change changed the roof lining airbags from this car and put them into the silver one which is next door which is now silver but was purple because we've basically switched all the panels off the two cars the silver one was a cat b the purple one is a cat s so we're rebuilding the purple one with the parts from the silver one and making the purple one silver and the silver one is now purple so yeah that's a lot to take in i suppose this one was actually written off cat b because the actual tub the carbon tub is damaged on the other side which i'll show you in a second we've changed all of the wheels over we've done the whole rear end so that's changed to the silver one on the other car and uh, this was the door look you can see down oh, it's so heavy in that corner there the uh, carbon tub is damaged so all we've got left to do on the i8 when i say all oh, i make it sound like we haven't got a lot believe me it is a lot we've got to change the whole front end over well it doesn't actually sound that easy to be fair basically from this point here everything on this car has to be changed with the other one because it's so damaged so that is going to be very difficult because obviously you've got all the electrical connectors it's a it's not a normal car it's not just an engine there there's there's live wires which could electrocute you and kill you so you have to be extra cautious and careful make sure nothing is live when we're working on it and make sure everything's back as it should be but we've got basically got to cut the whole subframe off and, and remaster kit onto that car it's going to be it's going to be fun but it's going to be hard so that is my plan obviously i this one starts here it won't start now because the dashboard isn't in it but that one next door i haven't started yet since i've had it so i don't know what the engine's like it should be okay i think it's only got forty thousand on the clock so it shouldn't be too bad but until then we don't know what it's gonna what it's gonna be like when we start it but my plan is to try and get that started mid-february with everything else that's going on that's probably about two and a half weeks of work on that car specifically and then fingers crossed by then it should start i do need to order an airbag for it and i also need to order some seat belts for it as well and this bad boy here do you remember this guys this was the jeep from back last year when i announced that i'd bought a lamborghini in a video actually i'd bought a citroen picasso which was basically my plan was to modify a citroen picasso but that's now changed and we're going to make a jeep picasso hybrid we're going to put the shell from the picasso onto the jeep and make the weirdest looking ugly jeep picasso ever so that is going to be happening probably around february march time this year when the weather hopefully starts to warm up a little bit and uh, the i8 is out of my hair so there's there's a lot on my plate and obviously we've got the i8 next door which the door's locked now i'm not going to go in there today but i'll be releasing the i8 video next week which you guys will see that'll be when we start to tackle the front end that i8 is a nightmare we've obviously had it eight months it's been a long time a lot longer than i expected to have it but some things in life just don't go to plan guys so you just have to just have to ride the wave one thing i do need to do though is i've bought wider arches for it i do need to put them on because at the moment if you look from the side the wheels do sit very very far out from the arches and the main issue of this other than the fact that it is illegal is it is plastering the whole side of my truck when you drive for a puddle it is 
so annoying. So I need to get that done ASAP as well. But color change may be on the cars for the truck. I don't know yet. And then peering over my shoulder, you can see the VW Golf GTD, which we've done the full engine change on, which is now done and it runs perfectly. We put an engine out of a Seat Leon in there. It is all running smoothly. So we've got the modifications to start on this car as soon as we can. I've bought a spoiler for it, which is gonna go on the back. Gonna buy a roll cage for it and take all the seats out. We're gonna do the front grille, a new set of wheels, which I'm actually looking for. So if you have any suggestions, comment below, or if you have any links to eBay posts that I can just buy straight away, then send me on Instagram. That'll be much appreciated. And as I'm talking, a, a lorry of ours is driving by full of six cars ready to be delivered to the Hot Wheels show tomorrow. So the O2 Arena, you'll be seeing Ace Car Breakers, lorries and cars very, very soon. Bit of an honor, really. I'm pretty excited to see the show. But back to the Golf, we're gonna do the grill, might do the air filters, and we're also gonna map it, get it ready for the track, and hopefully get it on the track early this year. Maybe like March time, March, April time, I'm not sure, but this is a busy month for me. Obviously, I'm trying to get my house pushed through, got to get the i8 done. It's a chaotic month, and obviously with the Hot Wheels as well, it's just added extra pressure onto my daily routine. But I thought I'd give you a little New Year's update video on where we're at with everything, and uh, I'll hopefully see you guys very, very soon. But it is so cold today, I can't even describe to you how cold it is. It's Reason. And it can't be doing these cars any good being sat outside like this, especially my, my baby Jeep. Oh, one more thing. Look in the back of the Jeep. The back of the Jeep has a contents which are more expensive than the whole Jeep itself. A nice little BMW i8 dash in there with a gear selector, the center console in there and everything. Let's just go and have a look at the cars on the Hot Wheels lorry before we wrap up today's video. So what have we got in there? We've got two Rovers, we've got an Audi on the bottom, a nice little Renault on the top, and another BMW. Decent. We've only got five on there, obviously because they are saloon cars. You can only fit five on there, whereas if there was a small one, you'd be able to fit six. It's gonna be chaos. It's gonna be chaos, but it's gonna be fun and it's definitely worth it because we've had a little bit of money out of it. And that's what it's all about, eh, guys? Enjoying yourself and earning a bit of moolah. It's your boy, HA, first video of the year. We is back, 2022. Let's bring it on. See you guys next time. If there's any videos you'd like to see, or you've got any suggestions for a video, then comment below and we'll see what we can get going.